So to bring those things back into our life, we have to do tazkiyah and tasfiyah. To bring those things back into our life. And this is the reason that we see all the issues and the problems. We can see uh, in our ma'ashiyat, in our homes, in our society, in our lives. This is the reason that the ruh, the spirit, the soul of the deen has, has come out of our lives. Rather not just come out of our lives, alternatives, alternatives that we've taken are very um, risky. The things that we've replaced them with. And they are... Uh, that we've replaced Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Sunnah Sharifa with other things. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa tariqa, um, his tariqa, his lifestyle, everything that he has told us, his afal, his actions, all of the actions that the Sahaba Ikram uh, emulated as well, imitated. And that in reality is the tariqa, the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have totally taken this out of our deen, out of our life. And whilst we have taken them out, eliminated them in our minds, such things have come into our mind that this is not necessary. This is not necessary. So, we don't even try to attain this thing. But in reality, that the whole life of ours, this dunya, the akhirah, everything depends on Nabi Al-Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa tariqah, his methodology. So brothers, this point we need to understand with firmness, uh, solidly, to bring this into our lives. We do tafsir and tazkiyah, kitabs, bayhaqi, mishqat, the all problems and issues. And this is a very open uh, word, that every difficulty, every issue, a person is protected from these things. So what a great... A guarantee that if we do this certain sunnah practice, then every problem, every negative we will be protected from. Just small, uh, easy action of the Prophet ﷺ, so much barakah, so much blessing in his sunnah that we gain a guarantee that if we adopt this in our lives and make it a habit, every problem. Now, problem today, the word has expanded so much that any problem that comes to the life of a human being, a society, home, individual, family, whatever we don't like, it's a problem, isn't it? It's a difficulty. So, and, and, and disaster is even worse than that. Calamities, tragedies, and massive problems. So the Prophet ﷺ said that this sunnah, this one sunnah, will give the cure for all of them. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrated that the Prophet ﷺ stated, that if an individual, every month, every month, so this is the method, and particularly we have to do this the way the Prophet ﷺ is defined. Now for example, if there's an instruction for something, then it will be told to you in different ways, and then the cure will take place if you follow the instructions. That the Prophet ﷺ, he said this from his blessed statement, this is a barakah for us, remember this. So water, that in water, there are thousands of cures. And every cure will be told, if you do it this way, you'll get this benefit. If you drink it this way, you'll get this benefit. And it will be water, one item, one resource in the, in the glass. But here now we're being given the cure. That every morning in the month, three days in the month, three days in the month. So every month, three days, and at the time, the morning time, whichever individual, now what a beautiful cure. If he, t- if he licks the honey, subhanAllah, if he licks the honey, then Allah Nabi Wasallam said, every problem, every disaster, he will be protected from that. SubhanAllah. Yes, imagine this, imagine. So we don't put importance on this. Difficulties, cure, disasters, the cure, solution. We have problems, business problems, home problems, outside difficulties, illnesses. So vast is this uh, definition that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gives the cure. Why? Why should it be in the morning? Why only three days? So here, which honey shall we use? So much yaqeen that just like companion came and said that I am in poverty. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, get married. This is a 
hadith. He said that I'm poor from before. Poverty, hard up um, situation is that dhikr is teaching me the point number one that if my rizq, my earnings are haram, one morsel is haram, then my ibadah has not been accepted. Do you understand what I'm saying? So first and foremost, which sunnah should we practice on? I'm alone, what sunnah? On which? On what is what is the source of my income? My earnings, not on clothes or imam or turban. Rizqun halal, halal earnings. Halal money. Not one pound should be an awful. Then people leave interest and haram. Those who have consumed other people's money, they give it back. The haram that they've gathered, they throw it away. They take it out. No, no, no. Throw it away. By mistake, I did haram. My yaqeen has increased. What? Increased what? Yaqeen that Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whatever is halal with you, there will be barakah. Blessings. Allahu Akbar. That's it. So this yaqeen we need to bring about. The haram, we should not implement it. Don't lie with regards to earnings. The first sunnah that we need to implement in our lives to be corrected. The first step that we need to take, the first sunnah practice that we should adopt and bring to our lives is what? Is what? Rizqun halal. Halal and is otherwise salah is a waste, prostration is a waste, umrah is a waste, tasbih is a waste, our chilla is a waste, spending time for Allah, our dars, our teaching, everything is waste. Everything. First and foremost, the first sunnah,